So when did you first realize you were going to write a book about this deeply fascinating character, Lane Stritch? My father had died right before Lane Stritch died. And I was very raw at that moment. And I was really feeling like I'd taken a horribly wrong career turn into the realm of fashion. Well, not that I don't love fashion, as did Elaine, by the way, but I felt like uh, all of a sudden I was perceived as a fashion writer and I'd made a big mistake by, you know, becoming a fashion critic. Um, Certain people weren't going to take me seriously anymore. And I just, I just thought I totally screwed my life up. Um, And Elaine Stritch in this documentary about this fantastic musical company, um, you know, she just uh, was so immediately compelling. Um, I knew she died recently and I'd, I'd been looking for a book project and I just thought, I thought, is anyone doing a biography of her? Um, and my, I remember my boss at the time, because I had to get permission to do the book, said, oh, I'm sure someone's, I'm sure someone's already signed up for it, you know. Um, but I went to the memorial service and um, at the memorial service, her lawyer got up and said, hey, if anyone is interested in finding out more about Elaine Stritch, her papers are going to be at the um, New York Public, Li- the Performing Arts Library at the New York Public Library, the Lincoln Center. I thought papers, you know, whenever as a journalist or a scholar, when you hear about papers, your antenna go up um, because it, it means something that hasn't been, you know, it's, it's primary material that hasn't been, usually hasn't been, in this case, had not been rifled through yet. Do you have a favorite role that she played? Definitely Joanne and Company, which is, I just learned this. Um, so there's a revival of Company uh, that was, it was, I think there were three previews on Broadway before the pandemic. I saw it in London before the pandemic. And then it came to Broadway and it, there was supposed to be this huge gala with for Stephen Sondheim's 90th birthday. And it had to be delayed because of the pandemic. I just read it's coming back, uh, I think next next winter. So that's exciting. So Joanne, uh, Elaine originated the role of Joanne and Stephen Sondheim's company, which is really the musical that put Stephen Sondheim on the map. A lot of people think, oh, it's West Side Story or, you know, Gypsy. No, it was company because company was, he did lyrics and music for company. It was, you know, it was all the music was t- in totality his. Are there any contemporary actors or actresses who remind you of Elaine Stritch? No, she was one of a kind. I mean, there are a lot of people who remind me of Elaine Stritch because I think she was ahead of her time in sort of questioning gender roles and just kind of being nonconformist. Stritch didn't get married until she was 48 years old when she married an actor named John Bay. One of the things that drew her to him is that in her words, he didn't give a flying fuck if I did Hamlet in drag and made the cover of Time. Elaine really loved the idea of romance. She she loved the idea. She grew up on 1930s and 1940s movies and musicals where there was always a leading lady um, and being swept off her feet, you know, um, by a man. And I think she had trouble picturing herself as a leading lady. She wanted to be, but she could, she didn't believe that she was beautiful enough or feminine enough to play that role. And so she adapted by being funny um, and being cutting. I think she loved men, you know? I think she loved men partly because she herself had characteristics that many thought of as masculine. Um, and I'm not just talking about, you know, cutting her hair short. I also mean just being direct, getting to the point, you know, um, stuff that certainly in, by the time, by the 50s, were not really part of feminine culture. In addition to being impressively foul-mouthed for a woman born in 1925, she was also a a bit of a kleptomaniac. What was interesting about what she took was sort of the banality of it. Like if, uh, actually this didn't make it into the book, but I remember I was talking to Sarah Jessica Parker once at a party and she told me about an occasion when 
Stritch had been, I think, at her house in the Hamptons or at a house in the Hamptons and had a bag and there was like a bowl of oranges in the foyer or something. And she just talking to someone just completely openly, she started putting the oranges in the bag and just, you know, taking the oranges. I think it came out of number one, a depression mentality. You grow up even she wasn't her family wasn't personally affected by the depression, but nonetheless, you grow up. I have parents who grew up during the depression. So I know, you know, you, 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 you grow up with this feeling like, oh, it could all disappear tomorrow and I better get what I can while I can. And they're not appreciating this thing. I'm going to appreciate it and I'm going to take it. Um, so I think that's number one. Number two, I think the difficulty of being an actress without a steady income and really doing it on her own. I mean, she didn't get married as we discussed till she was 48 and that husband was not a big income producer. He he was a scion of an English muffin family, but they sort of pretty much cut him off. You know, it wasn't going to be a reliable income source. His acting career was not really taking off. And so Elaine, in a way that was really quite advanced for someone of her day, was always negotiating, negotiating, negotiating whatever her salaries on various productions, be they theatrical. She was just unbelievably tough. She just always felt like she was getting screwed. Um, and that if she could just get a little bit more, she'd come out ahead, you know, like that Brie she stole from the, <laughs> from the grocery store with her friend, Terry Hecker, you know, and then she, I think she managed to turn it around. Like the police came and she said something like, I don't know. She like she found a way to blame the store for the brie. So what's what's the first thing that you, Alexandra, remember stealing? In my life, um, oh my god, probably a pack of gum from a store. I mean, I'm sure I stole something before that, but that's I remember that because I had a little spate of shoplifting in maybe when I was nine or ten, and and with my best friend, you know, we would steal packs of candy or gum from stores. Um, and then I remember she was going to tell and I got upset. So I, you know, I, I, you know, I beat her to the punch with a confession of the teacher and we had to go back to the store owner and tell them it was awful. It was You awful. confessed before you got caught. Yes. Because I thought my friend was going to tell me it, not because not, I just wanted to get ahead of it. You know, it was really bad, but, oh no, there's another thing I stole. This is like, the gum is more, I remember, this is terrible. I remember my mother didn't let me have makeup and uh, my mother didn't have makeup really very much. And I remember I wanted makeup so badly and I wasn't going to get any makeup. And I, this is a, a horrific admission, but I, um, I stole my, this will mean nothing to you, a man, but <laughs> my cousin had like this Clinique powder in her bathroom, like a, like a loose, like my, my, my cousin's mother, my aunt was this extremely glamorous person with tons of makeup. And she, she bought her daughter's makeup and she had Clinique powder in a jar and I stole it. Like we were there for Thanksgiving or something. And I just stole it. I was like, they won't notice. <laughs> Shit. There's no business like show business. Like no business I know.